Nature Boy here. Have you been uh, wrestling with iron stains and metal stains in your bowl? Well, we are going to show you how to take care of them so that you can actually win this match. This is, a lot of people mistake me here um, for my brother of a different mother, but me too. I'm Nature Boy. And we're going to put you through this process of removing stains from your pool. Now, this is a multi-stage process where it is going to take you multiple days and you have got to follow the directions and you are going to have to do it day by day by day. And I highly recommend that you do it one day, two day, three day, four day. Don't leave days in the middle because the first thing that you're gonna to have to do is take the chlorine out of your pool. And when you're taking the chlorine out of the pool, of course, now you're opening yourself up for algae issues. And that, we're going to have a few things that we're going to try to help prevent those algae from coming in. And that's the process. So we're gonna give you all of the product that we're using. This is gonna look like a see you later advertisement but I can tell you we've been doing this for 20 years and they have the only products that work. Um, they have a patented process to remove the metal from the water and that's what you need to do. Once you get the stain out, you have to worry about removing metal from the water and that's the hardest part to do. In the past, what we've done is we've actually drained the pool and then refilled them through a filter. That way we have a limited number of total dissolved solids and a much lower metal process. But the bottom line is you're going to need to remove the metals with the water in the pool. So we're going to go step by step through this and we're going to show you the products exactly how they follow through. Before you start this process, the most important thing is if you have a heater, you absolutely positively need to bypass it. Because when we put in metal removers in the pool to remove the iron and the copper, it does not discriminate against the copper in your heater. So it will remove the copper in your heater as well. And so you can see this is what I would call a standard bypass. Um, this is the correct way to do it. So you have a three port valve here. This door right here, there's an off here and there's a door underneath it that's blocking the water from going in. So the water is coming out of the filter and then it's getting diverted through this pipe over to that T. There is a check valve here, which prevents the water from coming back into the heater. Very, very important. Some of the heater bypasses have two of these valves. And so the most important thing is if you do have two of these valves, I like one over here, then the off needs to be over this pipe. And then if there's one over here, the off would need to come over this pipe and all the water is gonna go through the bypass. So extremely, extremely important. Otherwise you're gonna be spending about $6,000 or so to replace your heater when the heat exchanger goes. And I can guarantee you that if you think it's gonna get covered under warranty, it will not because the manufacturers require us to take pictures of everything and they can actually analyze it and see exactly what caused the heater core failure. So bypass your heater before you start anything. This is step one of day one. I would recommend that you go out and buy everything in advance I am a firm believer and have a lot of excellent results with the See You Later products. So I would recommend buying their Rust and Iron Pool Stain Remover Kit. And you can see their website here at the top. I would also recommend the Citric Acid Stain Remover. Um, at the time when you're removing iron, you might as well go ahead and remove the copper as well. Um, Citric acid will also assist in removing iron stains as well as the copper stains. After you actually remove the 
iron and copper and metals, they become what's called the fabric of the water. And there are no filters other than a reverse osmosis filter that is going to actually filter it out. There is a patented process from See You Later, which they use in their See You Later bags, eggs, that go in skimmers and pump baskets that actually combine with the metal and remove the metal from the water. And that is what's done by this filter. So we take this filter, it actually comes with two metal removing cartridges and then two copper, I'm sorry, um, carbon cartridges. However, the carbon cartridges only remove uh, I think in particular it's up to about two microns and if you have a good filter the filter is actually removing it to about one to three microns depending on what type of filter you have and how it's set up. If you were going to fill the pool with well water or possibly even some community water you could then set this up so that your initial input is going to be a filter for the copper um, metals and then you're going to have a after that have a two micron filter a one micron filter and a half micron filter and these I'm not sure that see you later sells these this is a standard filter size and you can buy these filters pretty much online anywhere and you're ideally would want to get down to a half micron when you're refilling the pool if you're recircling the pool of water like we're doing it's already pretty well filtered and so the carbon filter is not going to do a whole lot so um, we're just using this as kind of two pathways and each one of them is going to be roughly five to ten gallons based on the pumps that we're using to put the water through. Next thing you're going to want to do is purchase some Pool Perfect plus the Phosphory. This is enzymes. This is going to help your water not become a swamp or algae in it. So the enzymes help with the cleanliness of the water with the clarity of the water, they remove uh, some of the biofilm. The phosphates, uh, of course you're getting some orthophosphates in your pool if you are putting it in with community, if you're using community water. Um, the other issue that you have to be concerned about is when they do your landscaping that some of the fertilizer winds up in the pool. So this is going to remove those orthophosphates as well as it's going to add enzymes and this is all to help prevent algae from growing because we're going to take the chlorine down to zero. Next because we're trying to prevent algae in a pool that has no chlorine in it we're going to add some non-metal algaecide. So very very important you do not want a metal algaecide there are copper algaecides, and I know they're triple chelated, but it's still copper, and it's still going to wind up getting in your water, and then it is going to consume some of the citric acid that you're going to use to remove the copper from the water. Also, many of the salt cell systems strongly recommend that you do not use copper algaecides because they affect the longevity and um, the actual process of creating chlorine as they start coating the the anodes and the cathodes in the cell itself. So this is a good alternate. Of course polyquats don't work as well as metal but hopefully we're starting off with an algae free pool and this will work just fine for our purposes. You're probably going to need some muriatic acid to reduce your pH and alkalinity because we are going to have to bring the pH and the alkalinity down. Uh, if you're using a tab pool, then chances are you already have low pH and low alkalinity unless you're putting in bicarb and soda ash. 
So let's get to the day-by-day -day process. So day one, the most important thing we're going to do is we are going to bypass the heater. Then we are going to take the Culator Mega Maintain sequestering, sequestering agent and we are going to pour that into the skimmer. And sequestering, that actually means to hide if you look it up in the dictionary. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up the water to allow more metal to dissolve in it. And so that's what this is doing. We're, we're making the water open to dissolving the metals such as the iron and the copper. We're going to add in the natural chemistry pool perfect plus phosphory, which is the enzymes and the phosphate remover. We're going to add in some algicide and the natural chemistry pool perfect and the algicide gets poured straight down the skimmer as well. If you have to reduce your pH and alkalinity, you're going to have to figure out how much muriatic acid you're going to need to do this. And do not, do not under any circumstances pour this into your skimmer. And you're going to want to distribute this on the outside of your pool a little bit at a time. Um, it is very potent and it could affect the surface of the pool. So you want to be pouring that away from you in small amounts and keep running it around the pool. Very important, you have to drop your chlorine to less than one part per million. Closer to zero you get, the better off you are, the better results you will get. The reason why is citric acid and ascorbic acid actually react with chlorine. And so if you have chlorine in the pool, you are going to eat up a certain amount of that citric acid and ascorbic acid in neutralizing the chlorine. So this is our day one, this is what we're doing. And we're prepping the water so that we can actually remove the metals and stains out of the pool. Day two, we're going to do our stain removal. So we're going to put in our ascorbic acid, which is going to hopefully lift the rust and the iron stains. And this is a Culator product. And then we're also going to put in citric acid, which is intended to remove the copper. Again, this is a Culator product or C later product. And um, you can purchase other brands of these. Uh, the citric acid is relatively inexpensive. The ascorbic acid is a lot more expensive. And any of the women out there that have expensive makeup know that a lot of it contains ascorbic acid. And as soon as you open that makeup, it will oxidize and the ascorbic acid portion of it will go bad. So once you open this container and you start exposing it to air, it will oxidize. So when you open the container, you want to use the entire container. Day three, now that our stains are lifted from the pool surface, skimmer baskets, etc., all the fittings, we need to now remove those metals out of the water. And this is where the Filfast Professional Metal Remover comes in. And you want to use that in conjunction with one of the Power Pack 4.0s, which is kind of a little egg that you put in your skimmer basket. I'm sorry, in your pump basket. So we're, we're kind of hitting it from both sides to try to remove all the metals that we can from this. Uh, depending on how bad your metals are in your water will depend on how long this process will take and whether we have to add and replace the filters in the fast fill or actually add extra eggs into the pump basket. Um, so this is imperative that we do this before we start putting chemicals back in the pool because without removing the, the metals, as soon as you start putting chlorine in, it will oxidize. And now that those metals will go right back and stain the, stain the surface and the fittings exactly the way they were stained before. Before C Later came out with this process, 
um, we used to drain the pools and then refill them with known good water and sometimes a lot of times we had to truck that water in from other places other than where the pool actually was and that can get very expensive so this these filters I know they cost money but the reality is the cost of draining and refilling a pool is going to exceed two thousand dollars if you're paying for the water and the chemicals to balance everything out so this is by far the easiest the least expensive and the most environmentally friendly way which is very very important california does not even allow you to drain and refill your pools um, us on the east coast are a lot more fortunate we have a lot more water and people don't look so down on draining and refilling pools here we are we're back at pool this is day three yes and so day one we prepped the pool for everything putting in all the chemicals so that this stain removal will work then day two we put in the actual stain removal uh product so the metal has been dissolved into the water and it becomes what's called the fabric of the water. So it's not like you can typically filter it out with a filter, not even a 0.5 micron filter. So you would have to use something like a reverse osmosis filter. Well, See You Later had come out with this product, uh, which is an egg that goes into your pump basket and I promote the 4.0 PPM one. And we're going to go ahead and put this in the pump basket. But we additionally got the fast fill filter and we put some cover pumps in the pool and we're gonna run this now for about two days. And what we're looking to do is get four turns of the pool. So you're gonna have to calculate how many gallons your pool is. You're gonna figure that you're gonna get about 10 gallons a minute through this. As it starts to clog up, you're probably gonna get less. So. We have the special see later cartridge in this one and in this one. And then we have um, a carbon filter in the post filter in. Now, if you were filling this from a well or a really poor water source from community water, you would come in and you would actually go through the see later filter. Then you're gonna go through a rather large carbon filter, then a medium carbon, carbon filter, and then a small carbon filter. So this one is typically about two microns, this one's about one micron, and this is a half a micron. And you do that so they don't all clog up. If you started out with a half micron, it would clog up a whole lot faster than if you staged it. And then what you would do is you would loop the output of number two into the input of number three and that's if you were filling it. Now, this particular pool, this water's been in here a while, it's been filtered through a DE filter, which is giving you about one micron. So I really have no concerns about that. I am looking to get the metal out of this pool, and that's the trick. Now, prior to this product, we would go through this whole stain removal process, and then we would have to empty the pool, refill it, and then balance the water. Well, that's gonna cost you about an extra $2,000 to do that. So this is a very new product. It's, it's innovational, it works. We, we've been using these eggs for about 20 years and we have got a phenomenal success with it. And now we have started to introduce this into it so that the cost of replacing these filters is a lot less expensive then the cost of replacing the water in the pool and then rebalancing it. So we're going to show you how we put this in the actual filter pump basket. And then we have one more day left, then we'll come back and we'll actually test this water to make sure that we have removed all the copper and the iron. The original test came out relatively high. And so at this point, we're looking to get it to virtually zero. So let's move on and we'll put the egg in, see you later egg in the pump basket. And that 
that should pretty much solve getting all the metal out of the pool. And when you buy the kit, actually two of these come with it. So that's a, a great thing uh, because you're going to blow this out trying to keep this water filtered and getting the iron out of it and the copper out of it. And then once you've done that, you run this for a while, then you can throw this one away and put the second one in for maintenance. Okay, so we have shut the supply line off into the pump so that we don't lose our prime in it. It does have a check valve, so there's a lot of um, things here to prevent it from losing its prime, which is great. It's nice when builders do this to make it easy for the maintenance companies to maintain the pool and also for the homeowners to maintain the pool. So we're simply going to remove this lid and we're going to go ahead and put the egg in here. Now be careful that you don't get any debris on the lid of this, right? Because if you get debris on the lid of it or on the o-ring on the underside of this, then what's going to wind up happening is you're going to suck air through this. And when you start sucking air through it, then it loses prime and it just is not as efficient. So we put our egg in here with our 4.0 filter. We're going to go ahead and put our lid back on, put it on in the correct direction so that the front is actually in the front. We'll open up our valve. And we're going to go ahead and turn our pump on. So that's all you need to do. If you don't want to buy the additional filter, you could probably get away with just putting a couple eggs in the basket and do it that way. Very, very, very important is we are not ready to put chlorine back into this pool. So we are going to wait and put chlorine in it in another day or two once we have all the filtering and we feel that we have all the metal out of it and we've tested that all the metal is out of it. You can actually take your water to a good pool store and they will test it through something called the spin lab. And the spin lab, if they have the correct one, will actually give them the copper level and the metal or iron level in the pool. And so you, you take it, have the pool tested before you start, and then after the pool is complete, test it to confirm that you have removed all the metals. Day four, okay, at this point, we have processed the water, we have removed the stains, and hopefully we have removed the metals from the water. You want to verify this with a good test equipment. I would recommend that you go to a local pool store and ask them if they have a spin lab and use the spin lab results to let you know where your iron and your copper levels are. After you have verified that you've removed the metals from the water, at this point, I would say, go back and balance your water. So you wanna have cyanuric acid in the water, somewhere between 20 and 30 parts per million. Once you start getting over 30 parts per million, it really starts working against you. And when you get to 100 parts per million, most states require you to drain and refill the pool. So don't go crazy on this. 20 parts per million of cyanuric acid works just fine in preventing the chlorine burnout from the sun. And the CDC has tons and tons and tons of information uh, on the cyanuric acid and the levels and the safety and everything else. Calcium hardness for a salt pool is kind of deceiving. Um, in a lot of pool stores don't understand the cyanuric acid and they don't understand the calcium hardness. In a salt pool, you are going to max out between 200 parts per million and 250 parts per million. You will not be able to get any more calcium in the water. It will suspend in the water and the water will be white cloudy or it will start dropping out as the water heats up. Remember the calcium has a reverse solubility. So where sugar dissolves in hot water, calcium 
dissolves in cold water. And unlike sugar, which can be a supersaturated solution, calcium cannot be a supersaturated solution. So it starts dropping out of the water. The other thing that assists in calcium dropping out of the water is high pH and high alkalinity. So you always want to try and keep these in check so that the calcium does not drop out. And also the high pH and high alkalinity is the evil component of dropping the metals out of the water. So if you had high cyanuric acid, high pH and high alkalinity, you are going to have metal problems. These things cause the metals to drop out. So keep all of these items in check. At this point, we want to slowly introduce chlorine because chlorine is an oxidizer. And if there are any metals left in the water, this is going to oxidize them and ca cause them to fall out of solution. I do believe that in this scenario where you're trying to introduce chlorine slowly into the pool, chlorine tabs are probably ideal for this. And that is typically what we use unless, of course, the cyanuric acid levels are high. And at that point, we will use what's called a cal hypo tab and use that instead of the regular chlorine hockey pucks, the white ones that you see. Salt systems, ideally at this point, if you don't have a zinc anode after the salt cell, I would strongly recommend that you do this. And again, chlorine is what oxidizes the metals out of the water. As it goes through the salt cell, if you have any metal components in, they will become positively charged. The zinc anode is then connected to the ground or the bonding wire in reality, which will cause it to attract to the zinc anode. And while this is not a cure-all, this definitely helps in preventing future metal dropout into the water. Again, this is all because the chlorine oxidizes it, and the chlorine is the highest in the throat of the salt system. And in salt systems, this is one reason why a lot of times you see the staining right around the returns because the salt system chlorine, the high chlorine level, has caused those metals to oxidize and they find homes right where they come into the pool. When we started out on this project, the spin lab told us that the iron content in this pool was 0.4 and that the copper content in this pool was 0.6, both of which are pretty high. You're going to start seeing staining once your iron level gets above about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And so we have gone through the process of removing it, and you can see on the left-hand side, hopefully clearly, how the return fitting is that orangey brown and then you have orangey browns in front of that return fitting. And if you look at the right picture that is afterwards and the spin lab told us at this point that our iron content was 0.1 which is negligible. It, it's going to show something. Um, I've never seen it get down to actually zero and we did the exact same thing with the copper. We took it from 0.6 down to 0.1. So very, very noticeable differences. Another picture here, the one on the left is before we started our process, and the one on the right is after we started our process, or after we finished our process. Same thing here, you can really see it in the skimmer baskets and the pump baskets. You can see how oranging everything is on the left one, and it is just absolutely white on the right side. Okay, when you start out with, I call them the sea later egg, and you put it in your pump basket, it's going to be like the one on the left side. So it's going to be flat, or relatively flat, and 
very, very flexible. Once you put it in and it runs for a number of hours, it's going to look like the one on the right side. So it's going to bloat up. And this is the normal process. Now, how can you tell when this bag actually gets bad? Well, if you take it out and you start squeezing it, you'll find that it will start feeling like it has plastic in it and hard plastic. And when it starts getting a lot of hard plastic in it or feels like it has hard plastic in it, and quite honestly, we have found that they have discolored typically by absorbing all the rust, that white coating on the outside that it's in starts to turn that yellowy orange as well. So this is what's going on with these See You Later bags. We've been using them for a lot of years. This is the only thing that we have had success with other than draining and refilling the pool. Woo! Look at those results, baby. It's sparkling clean. Yes. Can we get a woo for the success of this project? And uh, I really hope you found this educational. Please, I hope it works well on your pool. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.